In this comparative study, I will be analyzing the themes of nihilism and everything everywhere all at once and the end of Evangelion through the lens of editing techniques, narrative structure, and cinematography. This state of nihilism, the idea that life has no meaning or value, cannot be avoided. We must go through it, as frightening and lonely as that will be. Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher and philologist, the creator of the ideology nihilism. The End of Evangelion, better known as one of the seven films of the Japanese anime, Neon Genesis Evangelion, created by Japanese animator Hadayaki Anno. The End of Evangelion is a continuation of the duology of Neon Genesis Evangelion. However, it is not a sequel. It is an alternative ending to episodes 25 and 26 of the show. Neon Genesis Evangelion and The End of Evangelion follows the story of Shinji Akari, a quiet 14-year-old boy and the son of the CEO of Nerve. He is tasked to become a pilot and to fight the angels that attack the cities. In 1995, while Hakaidi was creating the Evangelion show, he stated in his blog, Shinji has convinced himself that he's a completely unnecessary person, so much so that he cannot commit suicide. He also stated, a man, Hakaidi, who ran away for four years, one was not simply dead. In Japan during the 90s, during the lost decade, a period in which the economic bubble collapsed in 1991, suicide rates in Japan skyrocketed in 1998 due to unemployment. Since a parallel between major depressive disorder and effective nihilism is apparent, Nietzsche himself describes effective nihilism as lethargy, heaviness, and depression. If you haven't heard of Everything Everywhere All at Once, I would think you were living under a rock. Everything Everywhere All at Once won awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Film Editing, and more at the 2023 Oscars. A Chinese immigrant woman named Evelyn and her husband Wayman struggle to maintain their laundromat company while dealing with an emotional conflict between Evelyn and her daughter, Joy. Evelyn discovers that there are infinite versions of herself across different dimensions, and that she must defeat Jobu Dupaki. This sci-fi multiverse film was created by the Daniels, Daniel Quain and Daniel Schneider. One reviewer, Larissa Karnan, a 22-year-old woman and offspring of a Philippines immigrant who traveled to America for a better life, after experiencing depression and suicidal thoughts, saw striking resemblances of her own life while watching Everything Everywhere all at once. Depression among immigrant children are not uncommon. The prevalence of depressed mood was 13 to 20 percent among immigrant offspring. Both of these films have minor themes of Asian culture and sexuality through the sci-fi genre. However, one of the three major themes is mommy issues. Asuka, the second Ava pilot, is trapped within Unit 2 underwater. She curls up into a fetal position as we hear bombing sounds around her. The camera shakes and zooms in to mimic her surroundings, showing how stuck and claustrophobic Asuka is mentally and physically. As Asuka states she doesn't want to die, we hear a different voice emerge. No one still alive. No in a quick editing montage, we are shown inverted scenes, Asuka rotting, Asuka as a child, and shots with Asuka alongside a doll. This doll used to belong to Asuka before her mother had thought to believe that the doll was actually her daughter and not Asuka. Asuka's mother committed suicide when Asuka was just a little girl. This later created psychological problems with Asuka and her mother as she became neglected and seemingly replaced. To end off the montage, we are shown a black and white sketch of her mother beginning to embrace her, symbolizing Asuka's one-dimensional memory of her mother. Not only does Asuka have a poor relationship with her mother, a lot of characters in the end of Evangelion also have mommy issues. Shinji, Rei, Karuro, Misato, Ritsuko, Kensusei, Toji, and nor does anyone in Shinji's class have a mother. This creates a whole underlying theme of mommy issues of motherhood in the end of Evangelion. In the film Everything Everywhere All at Once, Evelyn and Joy's fractured relationship drives a narrative exploration of existence and interrelationships. It also serves the film's central emotional plot point. Their relationship is full of symbolism and psychological depth. As Joy struggles to confide and connect with her mother, she tries to find refuge in believing that nothing matters as a method to comprehend her lack of direction in life. As Evelyn and Joy both begin to fight across the multiverses, Joy explains to Evelyn and the audience that you can see how everything is just a random rearrangement of particles in a vibrating superposition. This scene was accomplished by the editing team of Everything Everywhere All at Once and is showcased by editing random objects into Joy's hand. 
such as an axe, a bone, or a bouquet of flowers. As Joy brings Evelyn to the Everything Bagel, Evelyn begins to understand that Jobu Dupaki isn't an evil, nihilistic version of her daughter Joy, but in fact, is Joy. Jobu Dupaki does this to make her mother understand her, something that Joy had lacked her whole life, which resorted to her nihilistic belief. Evelyn then starts to feel everything across every universe, shown through jump cuts and using all types of lighting to convey different angles of each universe. In this rock scene, done by just ambience, close-up shots, and full shots of rocks, verbalizing the subconscious thoughts of Evelyn's and Joy's conversation to each other. Evelyn apologizes for everything to Joy, after she understands exactly how Joy feels through her nihilistic view of life. Evelyn apologizes for Joy's existence as Evelyn brought her into life. Nihilism and mommy issues are seemingly connected throughout different medias. Fleutig Nyzen even wrote, I don't like my mother, in a letter to a friend when he was just 38 years old. This quote finalizing the connection between the two topics. As the film ends, we see Shinji scream as he realizes that Asuka is dead, after seeing her AV unit ripped apart by angels. Then the title card, to be continued, is shown, which is typically shown at the end of each Neon Genesis Evangelion episode to make sure that viewers tune into next week. And that's that. That's the end. Or so you think. After around 5 minutes and 5 seconds of seemingly genuine credits, the film continues. Not only does the end of Evangelion do this, but so does everything everywhere all at once. After Evelyn tries to defeat Jobu Dupaki by using all of her multiverse selves all at once, leading her to throw up and faint, the end title card pops up. Then the beginning of the credits start to roll. However, only for 25 seconds. This is known as a false ending. This was done to convey the theme of the end, simply enough. Nihilism is connected deeply within the idea of the end, as the common ideology belief, and what originally created the ideology to begin with, in the end, nothing matters. By creating a false ending, it gives the idea to the audience to question the making of the film if it just ends on a bad note, questioning its existence, in the same way that nihilistics analyze their own existence. While threatening to potentially lose its live audience in theaters, it does help the audience understand and connect with this idea by breaking the fourth wall while interacting with the audience to trick them into believing that the film had a bad ending. This trick can only ever really be done through film, and furthermore, only through editing. Towards the end of the end of Evangelion, we are shown a somewhat odd scene, with more flickering imagery and voices. And the most surprising element is the abrupt transition from traditional animation to actual footage of the Japan streets. This footage is characterized by its high level of noise grain, static, and encased within deep blue tones. Within these shots, the architectural skyline of Tokyo 3 the central city of the Neon Genesis Evangelion series, is shown through real shots of Tokyo in CGI to simulate the structures. We are shown shots of the Shinjuku Minaloza Theater with a full audience waving in their seats, overlapping each other. Showing the film's audience the theater makes them question their placement and their own existence, seemingly watching themselves through the big screen. With a combination of overlapping shots, 3D graphics, and a multitude of different visual effects, experimental films is used to communicate an idea instead of a narrative, which in this case is nihilism. As Evelyn lets Joy's nihilistic take on the world set in, she begins to sign Wayman's divorce papers and smashes a window after the tax collectors show up at the laundromat. Here in this scene, we see one of the most infinite editing scenes in the whole film. Despite having a VFX team of only seven people, almost each frame shows Evelyn in a completely different location and state in her life, from Evelyn being animated to a photo of the editing team over Zoom. This helps demonstrate her belief and idea that nihilism can impact every path she leads from every decision. Along with the orchestra, as Evelyn screams her frustrations, the music makes the climax of the film more emotional and impactful for the audience. This experimental editing scene was brilliantly pulled off by using a unique and revolutionary editing style, alongside help from intense and climactic music to bring more emotion and nihilistic belief to the scene. To conclude, both the end of Evangelion and everything everywhere all at once both discuss and convey themes of mommy issues and nihilism through its use of editing, broken narrative structure, and cinematography. Towards the last act, before the revolution and everything everywhere all at once, Evelyn says, We can do whatever we want. Nothing matters. 